Hey everyone, today I'm going to make a small guide on how to replace um, keyboard keycaps for mechanical keyboards. Apparently there's been a few questions about this, because some people mostly when they get their keycap puller that's generally included with their keyboard, something like this, um, they don't necessarily know how to remove the keycap without um, damaging the keycaps themselves. So basically, to remove a keycap using a key puller like this, which comes with most Cooler Master keyboards, etc., maybe Ducky, I think. So you put your keycap on like that. You grab it with your finger. You can have your finger through or you can just grab it normally. And you wiggle side to side until it comes out. It will come out carefully like that. And then it comes out easy like that. Keyboard's all safe. Switch is fine. And this is especially notorious of MX Clears because they have a reputation for holding the key stem very tightly. So you want to do this slowly throughout the whole keyboard if you want to keep the keyboard safe. I mean, of course you could always pull straight up, but that will that has a high chance of pulling the stem of the switch out, which you do not want. So the wiggle method is the absolute best method. However, instead of using this, if you happen to have a wire keycap puller like this, this is much better because, first of all, these break really easily. I have one that broke, it's right over here. They break very easily. And you don't want to do this. Yeah, see, look, breaks very easily. So if you're getting into mechanical keyboards or you want to protect your investment, I recommend getting one of these. You can get them for less than $10 on eBay or I think WASDKeyboards.com sells these inexpensively also. So yeah, I'm gonna remove all the keycaps on this keyboard and replace it with a Ducky PBT set because these are, a, a, ABS black on black keycaps double shot. So yeah, to remove it with a wire keycap puller, you would do this. So you can wiggle and then eventually it'll come out. The same logic, just wiggle and pull off with a little bit of force and it comes right off. Now the thing I don't really like about wire keycap pullers, if there would be a flaw, is once you stick the key puller on and wiggle a little bit, it's not as easy to remove from the thing as compared to uh, this. You just wiggle a little bit and it just comes right off. You slide out. A wire keycap puller, sometimes you may need to fumble with the um, keys a little bit. Yeah, like that. So, what else? You can easily remove this. It's not hard. And you Mechanical keyboards are generally really durable, so you, sh you shouldn't have to worry about pulling a stem. I mean, the suggestion for MX Clear keyboards with MX Clear switches is to let them sit a little bit with the stock keycaps before trying to replace them. That's a general suggestion. Because from the factory, MX Clear stems are tighter than other colored stems like MX Blue, MX Red, etc. And I can't get my key on this. They're tighter from the factory because they use a slightly different type of plastic, I believe. And that contributes to their extra grippiness. And these keycaps especially are very tight. It may not look like it, but compared to my other keycaps I have, these actually stick on. I, you can usually just pull these off with one or two wiggles, but this takes a few wiggles. Yeah, see? You turn it like that and then wiggle and it comes right off. For longer stabilized keys like the spacebar and sh the longer shift and enter keys, what I generally do is I try to do it like this. So either once you remove a few keys, you can try to manually remove it like this. It's not too hard like that. Or if you have to have one of these, you can just grab it on one edge like this and pull up, grab on the other edge, pull up and then grab the middle and wiggle a bit and it should come off right easy. But Sometimes the tolerances between the keycap puller and in the case of the keyboard are really small like this. So you can't really stick it in too easily unless you force it in, but that can break your keycap puller. And yeah, once you start getting a few keys off, have a good majority off, it gets much easier because you can stick a keycap puller and twist it with much more room. Because yeah, you twist it a little bit so it gets on the corners of these and you can wiggle and pull it off. So there's a few questions of 
what happens if you pull a, a key a switch stem? Like the this, for example, MS clear stem will be clear this clear plus sign. Um, generally, you have a very small chance of pushing right back into the switch if you pull it out with the spring. But likely, if you push back into the switch, you're going to hit the um, leaf and it's not going to activate normally. So, yeah, unless you happen to be very, very lucky and careful putting the, switch, the key stem back in the switch, you're going to have to desolder, resolder the switch if you have a plate mounted keyboard, which is most um, keyboards these days. Also, you get a, um, a wire keycap puller, and then the, these two arm leg thingies come like, they usually come like this from the factory, straight together. But to make it easy, I suggest bending it out a little bit. It won't, it's metal, so it won't do anything. Bending it out a little bit, and then so you nat naturally make it like this. So when you push on the keycap like this, you grab it one edge, and you get it, and you twist it, and then you can wiggle it out easily. So yeah, I'm gonna finish this up and then I'm gonna cut to the next scene which is replacing the keycaps with these ducky blank PBTs. Okay, now that we're done removing the keycaps from the keyboard, we can now add the new ones on. So generally, if you have a higher end keycap set like these ducky thick PBTs, they will come with a wire keycap puller which is convenient for you. And like I said, they come, what is it, pre like closed up? So you can bend it out a little bit and it'll be fine. So yeah, I already have a keycap puller, so I don't need to use the ducky ones. I'll leave it in the box. So yeah, let's start. Generally, these keycap boxes have two layers. So one layer there, one layer here. So this is the F layer, navigation layer, and numpad. So I'm going to start to escape because it's the best. Yeah, it's very easy. Just stick it on. This is for a ducky set, so it has four extra keys above the key, the numpad. So F1 will be gray. F2 is also gray. Oh yeah, when push, putting the keycaps on, push extra hard on them because initially they don't really sit with the, they don't go in with the stem all the way. So when you push them in there, they go 100% flush with the other keycaps that you put on. And yeah, it's very simple to put keycaps on. Taking them off is the long and arduous part. And you can go ahead and use this box to uh, replace the keycaps you just took off. So I just took off my black and black double shot ABS keycaps. I could put them in here, this box, no problems. Here's the main alpha layer. Let's start the space bar. You can start with anything. I generally add an O-ring to make the spacebar slightly, slightly easier to press, but you don't have to do that. That's just a personal preference thing. And also, people like flipping their spacebar like this, so their thumb is touching this side. You can also do that. It's, it's more ergonomic, but I, I personally like the little thing stabbing me right here. So I just stick it right on. And get these modifier keys. Oh, this set looks so good. This set is called the Ducky Thick PBT Blank Set. This is the blue and gray one. You can get it on MassDrop or MechanicalKeywords.com, I believe. They go for around $39 to $50, depending on when you get it. So it's kind of expensive, but it's PBT. It'll last a long time and it's very thick. For comparison, I can have a generic OEM keycap. Yeah, this one's from Cooler Master. Let me see. Let's see. You can see. Yeah, let's tilt it like that. See how thin that is? It's like half the thinness. This is 1.5 millimeter. This is 1 millimeter of thickness. A little bit thicker. Adds more sound and character to the keyboard, as well as making each press feel much more solid. Also, if you have a blank set, be very, very careful. Um, let me see. The camera can pick this up. Okay, let me see. I think you can see it right there. It says R2. Yeah, if you have blank keycaps and you don't know where the keys go, you look under the keycap. There's generally a very, very small molding that says what layer goes on. So this one says row two. If, if for whatever reason you ever forget or put it in a totally different box, it's unlabeled. 
You can do that. And there's the whole entire set. That is how to remove and replace keycaps. Also, replacing toll prey keys. They're basically the same thing. I will do a cut and go grab my toll prey keyboard right now. Okay, so for toll prey keyboards, it's basically the same. You can use the same keycap puller, this one, the wire keycap puller, or the generic keycap puller that comes with most keyboards. You can use either one. Same method, wiggle and pull. Yeah, I'll do a small example. So, yeah, just grab a key, twist a little bit, and come on, and wiggle. Or you can just pull straight off because they're kind of easy to pull off. And this is the understanding of a toe prey um, key stem looks like keycap. And it looks like this. And, uh, yeah. So, not much different. Very easy to replace toe prey key switches. And I believe each Topher keyboard has a different type of stabilizer, so you may need to be careful. Or they don't have stabilizers at all, and I'm just saying things. But I definitely know the spacebar does. Yeah, so space for our stabilized keys and they could be different. Also, Topper keyboards generally have a little um, spring right here. Don't lose this when you remove the space bar because it adds just that little bit of extra force to push the space back up. So just put it back on the stem and then drop the key cap right back on. And yeah, that's it. That's how you remove and replace keycaps for different types of keyboards, Topre and Cherry MX. I wish I had an Alps keyboard or Matthias keyboard, but maybe in the future I'll do a video for that. Anyways, thanks for watching and have a good day.